extended at the six as they double their room to maneuver on a pickup of three. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen his margin, too. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. The Browns send out their punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. That's taken at around the 40. 51 yards on the punt there. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Saints offense on the field ready to get their drive started. Well, this has been a tough one for them, Charles. They've struggled really on both sides of the football. And one thing that's really plagued them, the turnovers. They've had issues keeping the football in their possession. And every game that's ever been played, <laughs> all coaches talk about taking care of the football and limiting turnovers. And in this one, after we saw that first turnover, we worried that things would snowball, and it certainly did, especially on the scoreboard. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football, and right now I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. We're off to the fourth quarter here on Christmas Eve. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Throwing now is Carr. That's complete to a speedy wideout Goodwin. And they're going to get this down to about the 17-yard line here. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by Juan Thornhill. And the Browns are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. The Browns drive about to get started. And after the interception, they are sitting in an even better spot with the ball and a comfortable fourth quarter lead. Coming right, this is Chubb on the toss. And he gets it here to right around the 24 before he's out of bounds. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Watson's throw taken in by Cooper here. Watson hooking up with Cooper there for the Cleveland first. Gun. It's a give to Chubb. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. At this stage of the game, with the score where it is, the key here is to in bounds, and he did just that. Not by a huge margin, but he stayed in. And those come up in what we like to call winning edge meetings. The things that you have to do, late game situations, kicking situations, doesn't matter what it is, the things you have to do to win a game, and that comes up in that meeting, then you practice it, they've got to be happy to see it executed, being able to stay in bounds and work the clock. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Here's Watson. He's going to float this one deep right side. And oh, that nearly their first pick of the game, but it falls down to the ground incomplete. Under four to go now as they come up on second down. 
Now they return to the ground game. Chubb. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep looking for Cooper, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Alante Taylor. And the Saints are going to take possession here at their own 33. Well, these defensive coaches, they sure like what they've got in this rookie corner. And with good reason, as you saw there. He only cost him a day two pick. And a lot of people thought he had first round ability. But when he was available on draft night, that was one where you didn't need the full time to make the selection. You called that pick in early. And he shows why he was so touchdown, New Orleans. He just bumped up his personal stats with a second score, but they still have some ground to make up. Not terrific for today because of what you just said. They're still down on the scoreboard. But later in the year, when he piles it all up and starts to think about contract time, that's a pretty good deal for him. And I know darn well that you've got him in fantasy football, don't you? I don't. You always think I, you th you know, I, always think I just that. appreciate that you think I'm smart enough to have him in fantasy. Well, you are. Thanks. And that one bounces out of the back of the end zone, so we'll start the drive at the 25 on the touchback. The Cleveland offense ready to go. Well, don't look now, but they've got a little bit of a battle on their hands again. Back to a two-score game, the interception that led to a touchdown. You'd have to think they're a little more careful here if they, if they do indeed try to throw the football. Yeah, and I was a little surprised by the last throw. You know, that type of throw with this type of a game, I'm going to be very careful about it. Maybe the only throw you make is maybe a toss to your half halfback or something <laughs> like that. Otherwise, take care of the thing and finish this bad boy off. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Picked up by Obi Belafonwu. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Well, part of this defense now with multiple interceptions in this game, but this time they say turnabout is fair play because remember, they had a pick six on the other side, and now they get a pick six of their own. Yeah, they actually added to some of their nice play throughout this ball game. A good effort by them to secure another interception on this one. A better effort to take it all the way back for six. And how about an exceptional effort to match their opposition's pick six from earlier in this game. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. The Browns drive about to get started. And now this fourth quarter becoming very interesting. That pick six makes this a one-score game. Still plenty of time on the clock. We'll see how aggressive they choose to be. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two. That's going to leave them with just one remaining here in this fourth quarter. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Watson off play action. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Dangerous spot for them to cough it up. Lucky to have recovered because had the defense got it, they were already within a shadow of the goalpost. Yeah, and then you're yelling at your own defense. Sudden change, sudden change. That's not what you want to hear on your sideline. That means you've got to run out there and try and stop an offense who has the ball in a very advantageous position. But good news, they kept the ball. Bad news, it's third and long. A shotgun snap for Watson. And a most curious way there to burn some clock. That was wild. And at the end of all that, it winds up a safety. At this point, I think it's a surprise when he isn't close to being sacked on a passing down. The amount of times he's hit the deck today, I think a lot of us are reading safety before they even took the snap. Simply a merciless pass rush every step of the game. And that rush earns a crowning achievement there. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. On 
on second and nine. Carr, and that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Third and long coming up defensively. You pressure the quarterback or drape all over the passing lane? Yes. That's exactly both. what you do. It's both because they're not mutually exclusive. They may have been at one time in football, but not anymore. You want to have that pressure. And if you have a big-time pass rusher, send him after the quarterback and then make sure you blanket the field. And they'll bring the big tight end across the formation left. The tight end in motion right. Throwing his car. Pass complete, Thomas. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. Now Carr. And that's intercepted yet again, and that could be the backbreaker. Picked up by Denzel Ward. And the Browns have just about sewn up this football game. When you talk about making winning plays, that is a winning play at this stage of the game to come up with that interception, huge. I like how you identified that because most people think winning plays are the offense trying to get it done. In this case, nursing a lead, they found a way to make a play on that side. Of and all the way in, touchdown, Cleveland. Amari Cooper with his second touchdown of the game, number eight on the season. And the Browns use the big play to extend their fourth quarter lead. Extra point by York is up and good. And that will ensure that it will take a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie it. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Fields it right around the goal line. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. Here comes another drive from this unit, and Charles, they're coming off a costly mistake on the last possession, an interception in a game that is very close right now. Well, as we know, they all sting no matter what the situation, but in a one-possession game, that'll hurt a little bit more. But this is an excellent opportunity to make up for it on this drive. I just don't expect them to try and take huge gambles to make up that momentum in a hurry. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Here's Carr. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Harris. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. That's a staple of this offense. Drag round to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Car to throw. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Partner, they've got one chance left to keep this one going. And I think for you and me, let's think along with their offensive coordinator now. Has to think back, cycle through every play of this contest, and remember what's worked and what has it. Because right here, he needs the best play of the game in order to keep this one alive. Now Carr, got to have this one. Open man is Michael Thomas. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. Carr. 
Wide open receiver complete. And he's into the end zone. No flags. It's a touchdown. And now a two-point conversion. And we'll be tied here in the final minute. Do they have one big call left? Here we go. The touchdown's massive, but now they've got to have two to possibly take this to overtime. Listen to this crowd now. Their guys need a stop on this two-point conversion. to throw his car and it's caught and with it we are tied here in the fourth everything was riding on that two-point conversion and they got it they got it they now have the momentum time really dwindling in this game now their big deal is make sure they get a good kickoff and don't give up anything big on the defensive end and he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further The Cleveland offense ready to go. And Charles, obviously not much time left. I'm curious to see if there's enough for them to get into field goal range and try to win this thing. And partner, you and I both know the safe calls to kneel and just take it into overtime. But it's also very tough to pass up the chance to win it right now as well. But remember, if you do attempt that, it's got to be a big play downfield and still leave yourself enough time to get your field goal unit out there and kick for the win. After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on second and 10. They give the Chubb out of the gun. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. Final whistle blows, and we need some extra time here to decide who will be the victor. 60 minutes, just not enough some days to decide who's going to win the game. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. The Saints offense on the field ready to get their drive started. And everyone knows the OT rules, Charles, but pretty simple formula. They go down and get a field goal, we continue play, but if they can find the end zone on this possession, ball game over. And as meticulously as all teams plan for a game, I don't doubt for a second on that offense coordinator's play sheet, he's got some overtime plays that he wants to run. I know it sounds crazy, but they plan for everything. First and 10 all the way throughout the game, second and seven, whatever. Right now, he's looking at that play sheet saying, if we get to overtime, what can we break out that they haven't seen? Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. 157 yards rushing for him so far as his terrific season continues here. So after the run by Kamara, now another first and 10. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. On second down, Kamara. And a good push there defensively as they stop him at the 48. A gain of just one. So a big play in this opening drive of overtime. Now looking at a third and three.
And they'll go jet sweep to try to pick it up. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. And this is picked up by the Saints. And the defense not able to get it. From, from a defensive perspective, what's that moment like when you realize the ball is loose? It is a moment where all concentration goes right to the football. This is something you've talked about in all your preparation for the game. And you probably talked about this training camp. Knock the ball free, take it away from the other team, and now you have that chance. <laughs> it's a little bit of deflation when they end up recovering it. They knocked it free, but couldn't take it away. First throw of overtime for Carr. Oh, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Anthony Walker. And the Browns are going to have it with a chance to win the game here in overtime. Well, that's a tough one right there, CD. They fought back to tie it, to send it to overtime, had all the momentum, and then that interception. That fighting spirit, those fighting plays that got them back into it, maybe a little too aggressive there, throwing the interception, and now they've opened the door to get beat by a field goal coming back the other way. The Browns drive about to get started. One team squandered opportunity. It's another team's chance to win this thing. They forced that clutch turnover, and now all they need is a field goal here to win this ball game. Could not be set up much better, could they? A oh, Chubb fumbled it, and this is picked up by the Saints. And they take possession two yards away from midfield at the 48-yard line. And a costly, costly mistake. Coaches talk so much about ball security and in overtime so paramount. Barton, do you ever wonder if maybe they talk about it too much? Too much, yeah. It doesn't seem like you can, but maybe by discussing it time and time again, and you know they overemphasized it here, it almost became self-fulfilling. And any points beat them here. Field goal or a touchdown now. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. In motion comes the tight end left. On second and 11 now, Carr. That's complete to his running back, Kamara. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Kamara up the middle. Down at the 25. Now a timeout called for by the offense. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. Kamara gets it again on second down. They'll be brought down at the 21 after a pickup of four. But I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settle it because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. I know the defensive guys poking, clawing, raking, trying to knock the ball free and protect their end zone. Yeah, like you alluded to, especially this part of the field. And he got it! The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. And Bourbon Street, it'll be alive tonight. The Saints have won it. Thank mm -hmm. you.